everyone I'm Janelle with Tunes Unlimited and for this video um, I'm going to create a custom scene for Crazy Talk Animator and for my scene um, I want it to be an outdoor scene kind of like in the city um, so I'm going to look around for different um, props and buildings that I want to include on my scene and we're going to create a custom scene and then animate it and see how everything turns out so um, you know cartoon I have a lot of content from various um, content developers and but then Relusion and one of the things I like is the bank scene so we're going to use the bank scene and this will probably be my focal point um, and from there I'm going to just kind of fast forward through I'm going to grab different um, props to build up my little street before we get started animating everything What I'm going to do since I'm in the process of picking out content, I'm going to kind of shrink my stage so I can focus more on finding content I want to use. Let's go ahead and just add this tree up okay so now we have everything I think to build a nice little nice little scene and what we're going to do is build the scene first and then we'll add some characters to it so let me zoom in to my stage and now that we have everything that we want, I'm going to shrink this back so the stage is much bigger. Okay, so I want the, uh-oh, looks like I lost the writing. There it goes. All right, that looks right. So I want the bank to kind of be my um, focal point or the end state. I'm going to have my character walking through the street um, to get to the bank. And I believe the bank right now is a scene. So the first thing I want to do is collect everything and turn it back to a prop. Just right click on it, convert to prop. And since we have everything, let's go ahead and Make this a little bigger. Actually, let's see here. Yeah, we're building it up now so we can zoom in and make this nice and big. This is probably a good height for it. Now what I want to do, since I have this in the spot I, I want it in right now, I'm going to go ahead and lock these layers. so that um, they don't move around. Now I want cars to go by so let me go ahead and position this car and I want to go ahead and link these tires to um, the car so now I should be able to move them together like that and let's see here this building is on the Z um, on the Z axis is on 1.3. Let's move the car up. Let's say to let's move it up to six for now. We want to create some depth. We want um, cars going by and people walking on the sidewalk. So we got this one here. 
And let's position it probably about right here. And then let's go ahead and grab the link this tire to this car. And let's see here. Let's put it on 25. Let's also put this one on 25. And since they are in the same lane, I'm going to want them both to be on six. All right, so now we got two cars. Um, we'll just go ahead and do these for the rest of the cars real quick. Let me line the rest of these up. be a two lane. So if that's on six, let's put these on 12. Put it a different left. And no city has just one cab sticking around. So let's let's go ahead and give them a few cabs. Uh oh. Oh, they were popping up back here. And remember, we want the cars to be on different Z axis. So I'm going to make sure the ones in the front are on 12 and the ones in the back are on six. Okay, so, so we have our building and let me just hide some of these cars real quick so we can focus on the building. Okay. So I'm going to need to build more of the um, street out. And I want to keep this sidewalk so I'm going to make some duplications and see here it stays on 12. I'm just going to slide this over. Now this sidewalk is going to do some some nasty things here. It doesn't line up good, but we're going to see if we can mask that with props like, for example, this mailbox where we can put it in a, in a way that it won't um, it won't look so bad right here where you see where the two ends meet at. So let's see here they're both on nine. Let's bring this down so that it's behind it, and I want to create another one. Put it on this side. And see, we already got a, a street being built out. I'm going to do this probably one or two more times. Actually, this might do it. This is a nice nice walkway okay so we have the sidewalks but now we need to um, add some more buildings and we're going to use this building so what I want to use okay so we have this structure piece I'm going to copy this 
and then let's flip it and I'm gonna drag it down here and I'm hoping that I can line this up in a way that um, it will allow me to put another building in the middle. Okay, so that looks good. And I got a nice little hole right here in the middle, which is where I'm gonna pop this building at. Now, this building is not nice and square and straight like the bank. First thing I wanna do is shrink it down to look like it belongs here. That's better. And then um, I want to utilize the, the new features in CTA3, which is the deform tool for the props. And this is going to allow me to line this up and get everything nice and squared up. So let me, not this one, let's see. Let's reset that. Let's try again. Now you up about right here. You here. You here and you here. I think the middle can stay the way it is. And so this doesn't look um, a little bizarre. We're gonna make this also be a store. And how we're gonna do it is we're going to grab the door here and we're gonna make a copy of that. And we're gonna give this a door And maybe just go ahead and change it a different color so it's a little unique. Now, I want to go back because I saw in my um, content that I have, I had like some building signs or something. So I'm going to. Ah, there we go. We'll make this a nice little shoe shop. Make it look this small. Put it about right there. And let's see. We might even go with a different door. Let's try this one. And I want to be mindful of where these items are falling on the Z axis. So let me just zoom back in. This building is on a negative, negative nine. So I want to kind of get it right up on there. For both of them. There we go. All right, so now when we panned We got a nice little street with a building. 
and we can probably do it again if we need to but for now that should be enough to um, kind of get started I think what I'm going to do is since all of these got signs let's see if we can find a sign for this one let's see go back to signboard and we'll make this a nice little bookstore I think we can fit this right over top of that space hopefully it won't look too tacky okay so let's see this is at five let's move this back to probably nine yeah nine like the rest of them and we'll put this at eight and I don't know if render style is on this so I don't want to I wanted to blend with the color of the building but at the same time I don't want to spend too much time on it all right so we'll leave that alone for now okay so let me zoom out. It looks like now we have our building, our street, right? And boy, did that sound look ugly. Let me um, let's make your coffee shop instead. Okay. Um, since we got two lanes, we're going to leave some more street. So I'm going to take this. No, I'm not. I'm going to delete this. I got to find a road. Let me go to street elements. Ah. We're going to be a little creative because this is just a nice little gray square. I'm going to bring it up to the road and then I'm going to make this bad boy black so that it blends in with the road that's in front of it. Not quite. Okay, I think that blends in good. There are different colors. Let me zoom in real quick. Ah, oh, gotta love vector, I tell you. Um, and just see if I can match it up a little bit better. better all right so we got our street now we wanted to add some elements and I don't see them I know we had grabbed a light post and a tree so let me just look over here and we find the tree and tell you to go really big so you poke out. Ah, there he is over there. All right. And since most of the building elements is on negative nine, I'm going to bring the tree to be more like um, negative seven. So I'm going to shrink it down. Negative six is better. 
All right, I gotta look at some of these parts here, but probably have maybe two to three trees. So I'm gonna duplicate it twice. And I want the trees in the mailbox to kind of mask where the sidewalks are a little irregular. So here's a location right here. Let's put it right here, shrink it a little bit more, and find out what's going on with these. These are way too high up. We're going to bring these down to here. Okay, so there's room there. We're going to leave that there, and we're going to pan down to another location where they meet kind of crazy. This time, I think I'll stick the mailbox right here. And it should be really small. And the line work is just way too thick on that. So I'm going to thin it down so it blends in. Maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, that looks good. And um, let's see where another spot where we can put our tree. Well, this is one spot, but it doesn't look that bad. And I um, don't want to put a tree right in front of the store. So I will probably stick one. about right here. I want to make sure they're the same size. So really, since we've placed this one here, let's just make sure we get a good spot on it. And this will be my template instead. So I'm going to copy this one. And I want it to stay on the same Y and Z axis. So I want to keep it at 31.5. I'm just going to slide it down. Get rid of these trees, it's too tall. We'll put one right here. Make sure it's at 31.5. And let's see if we can find one. Maybe right where the seam, nah, maybe we'll just leave it at two. Two may do. All right, so we have trees and let's see here, let's find that street lamp. Once again, I'm gonna increase the size so it pokes his head out a little bit for me to see. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's zoom back in, see where we're going to put this street map. We want to get it a nice size. Street lamp's supposed to be tall. Maybe a little bit more skinnier. Okay. And I'm going to put one right here. Eh, yeah, right here's okay. Probably do t three street lamps. So I went on the same Z axis, so let's put it at negative six, like the other one. And let me see if 31.5 fits okay. In this case, it doesn't. It's a little bit over the sidewalk. We'll leave it about right there. Make another copy. And we'll drag this down. Maybe have one here by the um 
mailbox. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Run this down to a negative eight, like the rest of them. Alright, so when everything nice and lined up, and I'll probably do one more to make one more copy of this. And then let's just put one right here. All right, so we have a nice built out street. But this is all background. You need to have a good scene, should have like a background, mid ground, and foreground, something like right out in front. So if I have a character start over here and she was walking down to the bank, I have plenty of space to zoom in and get all nice, you know, a nice look. But for now, I'm going to make this scene that we just built, the background scene. I'm going to make the cars, the traffic that be on this road, the mid ground scene. And so what I want to do right here is put something directly in front of you and that will be the foreground scene. That will be stuff that you see right in front of you as you're zooming in um, on the shot. So I definitely want some some street lights. And this time they have to be in the front. We'll put them at about 25. And they should be significantly bigger to illustrate that they are right in the front. The other thing I'm going to need is a sidewalk. So we're going to add another one here. Of course, it doesn't need to be this big. We're going to shrink it. Put it about right there. And I can bring this down probably about right here. And I want to kind of have them be a little diagonal, almost like they're in the same spot on the same, you know, on the street, just at opposite ends. So I'll put one here, make a copy, drag one about, about right here. Um, and I really don't think we need to put one on this side because it will be past the shot. We, we want this to line up and stop, if anything, right where this lamppost is partially showing. So there's no need to add another lamppost there. So we'll work with these two. Um, in addition, let's see here. We, we maybe might add a, a street light, a traffic light. Eh, I don't really like the angles on, so maybe we'll just leave it out. Don't know if this trash can will make the shot, but we'll add them there for right now. It's on 25. Everything is where I need it to be. And I think these lamp posts are just enough to do it. And we'll, what we'll do is add a couple of characters over here walking by, which will also um, give a good look. So, our scene looks just about done. 
we're missing of course characters and the traffic so we're going to go back to the scene manager and I hit some of these props we're going to bring them all back to life so we got a truck Let's do a cab. Guess I didn't link that. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so. to let's duplicate this car and we'll put it here and we'll duplicate the tires We'll put it here and once again link it to the car all right so I probably would do one more vehicle and that's the bus because every city got a nice big ass bus it's always driving slow so the tires linked first And then let's move it down. That looks pretty busy. That is awesome. Okay, so the main thing we want to do is make sure all of our cars on each row is on the same Z axis. So let's see here. This is on six, six. And I hate to say it, but six, six, and six. We want things to look different, so let's make a different color car. Let me turn out that. Let's see. Okay, got a nice little white car there. Now, since these are on six, let's have these be at 12s. And I want to make sure I can see different cars. So I'm going to line them up in a different location. Maybe about here. Better yet, I like the bus more than I like the truck. And everything that's in the front will only be seen, if at all, just for a second. So instead, let's bring the truck up here with the car. And they're at the light, so there's going to be a slight shift. So there's going to be a nice shift here. We don't want them directly beside each other. I don't want to cabs right beside each other so I'm going to do one more car bring it up to 12 Ooh, let's get you all the way down Alright, and make a copy of you, bring you up to 12, get 
got to have a different color. Let's see, I think group one, we want that light again. And let's find something for you. Let's go with that. That will allow me to put you back here. And the good old bus. That was a six. All right, so the main thing that's left is to kind of make sure they're all on the right Z, but you want to make sure that they are on the same um, Y as well. So negative 22. Let me try that again. Negative 22, negative 9. Are you serious? Let's see here. Uh, you're not linked. Okay. Well, that theory doesn't seem to follow, so I'm just going to line them up as close as possible. Here we go. So we have a scene. We're going to pretend like these cars are waiting at a traffic light and then they will take off. So I'm going to go into camera mode so I can see how my scene is going to be. Great. Let's start here. Probably will bring the sidewalk up more. Let me switch back out. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Looks good. One way street. And the camera is going to work its way down to the bank. So now that we have our scene in place, and I don't want to modify it right now. It looks a little busy, but I think we got everything that we want. I'm going to lock everything so it doesn't move. Because now I'm going to go bring in my characters. So I'm going to go to the actor tab and um, let's look at some cute. Actually, Cartoon Solutions have nice looking granny. We are going to have granny walk to the bank. So I'm going to bring her to the stage. Oh, so tiny. Um, let's see. Let's get some more characters out here. Let's look at the G1. Add Eddie. And maybe, maybe two more. Okay, so we got what? One, two, three, four characters here. Well, let's at least get a dog. Let's make use of some of the new pets that we have. Mm. 
And so we got our dog. And I hope he has a leash. Let me just believe in the props I saw. Cheap accessories, animals. Thank goodness. Okay. Hmm. He's got a collar, but he there's no chain. So that's okay. Wanna make sure he, doesn't get you so okay we have all of these things and to keep things from being distracted while placing items the biggest piece are the cars the cars will definitely make it challenging to look at so we're gonna hide them all right so we're back to the street now for this scene, it's all about Granny, so let's take care of her first. We want Granny to kind of start right here, and we want to make sure that she is the right size for that angle. So let me, let me zoom in across the street. There's Granny. Want to make sure she's right behind the light post. So, oh, I did lock everything. Okay, no problem. Let's find the light. There we go. It's on negative six. So, let's put Granny at negative seven. And Granny's not that damn big, which means the light post can be taller because um, this door is huge. Let's see if we can shrink this building. Yeah, I think the building is too, too tall compared to everything else. So let's find let's see the side buildings. Might be easier to unlock everything real quick. Yeah, so this is gonna be taller. And this side can just be raised. Okay, so that looks a little bit more balanced. We bring Granny down just a little bit. Okay, so she has the room to walk. If the stain, the scene starts right about here, we'll be okay. So Granny's in place. We're gonna put our pup. We're gonna put our pup over here. Actually, we'll use Granny as a guide. And we're gonna have this guy walking him. So let's go ahead and grab him. 
And somewhere down here is a collar. There we go. Much better. I'm going to shrink him down into kind of comes to Granny's hand. That's a good spot. And then let's see if we can look like he's actually got the collar on. I think this is also a perfect time to use a deform tool. Let's see, let's work the bottom first, then the top. Great. And I just want to link it to the dog. Okay, that was different. But it looked like it linked. Let's test them out. Yep. Okay. And for the dog, he needs to be, let me see here, if she's negative seven, he should be about negative 7.5. Alrighty, so he's going to go right by her, and we're going to fix the collar to be the same way. Let's see, so we're going to have this boy, Eddie. This is his dog, and he's going to be walking him. He should definitely be shorter than Granny, but bigger than the dog. Hands can kind of touch him. That's great. Don't like the line work. I'm going to thin it out. That's better. And want him at 7.52, so negative 7.5. Wonderful. So we have our scene. I'm not going to bring the cars in until until after we started the first set of animation. And once again, it's all about Granny. I think I'm going to have both the dog and the boy come from the opposite end of the street. So I'm going to move them way make sure everything stays there yeah way down here and we'll have them by the bank about right here same thing for Mr. Eddie And let's go back to good old Granny. So let's go to camera mode and make sure we're on frame one. I'm not ready to work with these guys yet. For now, we'll just leave them in place and see how it goes. So I want the shot that will allow me to see part of this side of the street. 
as well as granny and more than likely we'll start off with a wide shot and then slowly zoom in to see granny walking down the street so one of the things that I like to do is um, I like to have the rule of thirds for my scene I hope I save that as a prop yes I'm going to add this to the scene and I want this at the very top so I'll just put this at 30 and with the rule of thirds um, basically where these lines intersect that is where you want your main focal point to be at this is where your eyes tend to zoom in at and if you have a character or an object of interest at that location it looks more visually appealing to people so I want my my little safe screen here I want my rule of thirds to line up with this for the most part so that I make sure I position granny when we start the scene exactly where I want her at so granny will probably start right here so I'll slide her here And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a walk cycle for Granny. But I don't want Granny from, to move from this place. So instead of moving Granny down, I'm going to move everything else down. And I'm going to achieve that by going back out. You know, exiting out of camera mode. And for right now, we're, we don't need... Eddie, Walter, none of the characters to move, not even a dog. So we're going to lock them in place. Even that prop. But everything else, including these cars, we want to highlight it. So actually, we'll leave the cars alone for now. They're going to go at a different pace. So for now, let's get everything that has a check mark. All added to the list. Okay, great. Ah, oh, we got street lights. I forgot about them. Sorry. Let me just delete that. Oh, there's another trash can. All right, back to the props. Might be faster to just highlight everything and then take away the items I don't want to move. Okay, so I have everything else highlighted minus the people and um, the cars so if you look although it's grayed out it tells you where the Z is at and the Y and the most important thing for this will be the Y we want to kind of keep it at 44.6 I think a safe pass through will slide down about 600 frames That's a lot of frames. And we want to move this street down. Ah, I forgot the number that quick. Let me go back. 44.6. Okay. 
So we want to move this down into Granny is by the front door of this bank. And then let's get back up to 44.6. Ah, I had you. Bam. All right, so Granny's in place. Granny's walking. Now, well, she's sliding. Let's make Granny walk. Let's go to animation. Um, we do it a, a flatten 2D walk. Uh, let's see, 270. Did I pass the female? Yeah. This should be okay. All right, so before we go back to the beginning, go out of the camera mode because I don't want to modify the camera. Before we go any further, I just want to take a look at her um, walk. Let's hide this lamppost so we can see her good. And let's hide the rule of thirds. And frame by frame, I just want to see how she's walking to make sure she doesn't look weird. Okay, so she's got a pretty... Pretty relaxed walk. And that's exactly what I want. I'm going to go to the two motion. Since it's looking the way I want. I just want to duplicate that over and over again until we get to 600 frames. Okay. And let's play that out. Go back to camera mode. And we just have Granny walking. It looks nice and balanced right at her pace. So Granny's out the way, and before we start playing around with different camera camera animation, we're going to get some more things going on. Now, we're back at frame zero. We don't want to mess with the camera because it's right where we want. We're going to go out of side of camera mode and go down to where this little boy is and his dog. I must have them locked. I do. So let's start with the dog. And I'm going to flip him this way. Let's just say he looks a he looks a little damn grumpy. Let's let's make him a little happy. Let's find his mouth and ah, there we go. Give him a nice little smile, maybe even have his tongue out. Oh, that's nasty. Um, we'll work with that. So we'll start with the dog first. 
one character at a time. That way, if something mess up, it's not too complicated. Um, let's check out the animation for the dogs. There we go. Move. Run and catch. Run away. Walk happy. We won't make this video too complex. We'll make them just walk happy. So while everything is going slowly to the right, he will go at a different pace. Um, all right, he needs to be at negative 8.7. Don't know how it got unlinked, but we'll link the collar again to him. And let's make sure we give him the happy walk again. For some reason, this collar does not want to stay linked. And I want to see the dog's animation. So let me, hi heaven, select the dog. Wow, and he's already off again. All right, I'm going to have to lose the collar for now. I cannot get it to link. And I won't let a caller mess up my animation. So let's just check out the frame by frame for the dog. Okay, so he like he's gonna be fine. I know he like he's walking backwards. But basically, I want them to kind of interact right around the middle. So I'm going to fast forward about 300 frames. And I am going to really zoom in some. Come on, Fido. Okay, so he's at 32.6 on the Y. Want to make sure when I drag him down, he lies back up at So by the time, see, 32.6. By the time it gets to 300, he should be off of the scene. Okay. And now that I have him walking the right direction, going with the scene, the only thing I need to do is give him some more walk cycles up to 300 so he continues to walk. Okay, so that should be it. And I'm going to need Eddie to do the exact same thing. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and unlock Eddie. And flip him in the same direction as the dog. All right. And Put him a little bit behind his dog. And we'll go and find a nice walk cycle for him. We can have them both be happy. He's a little kid, so he might pull off the look a little better than a adult. So I will have him run. 
and then once again I want to fast forward about 300 frames and he's at 33.9 And had from right here with his dog at 33.9. I actually want him a little off the screen. All right, I just like the dog. We now just need to get Eddie's walk cycle or one cycle down to 300 frames. Here we go. Bring it back. We'll look at it from the camera's point of view and see if they interact good. Awesome. Only problem is I gotta get them the hell off my screen. So we want to make sure they keep going. And as, as long as they're out of my camera frame, which they're not at 300, I would have made them disappear. Actually, they may still be because I'm going to zoom in on her. So I'm going to leave them alone for now. And for Walter, and Tyrone. We're going to hide them for now because now I want to work on the, the traffic. So we're going to bring all the props back. All right, so everything looks good. What I want the cars to do is kind of stand still for about 200 frames and I got to find a good landmark for them. And I think my landmark would be a good spot so that for the most part these cars stand still and everything else seems to move. Now we'll have it so that this truck stays right here at the line with the trash can. So now that I have my landmark, let me go back out. I'm going to tell it to lock everything and just unlock the cars. And now I should be able to just highlight everything and only pick up the cars. Yay. Okay, so I want 200 frames to go by. Make sure one still lines up like the trash can. And then 200. To line up by the trash can. Now the only thing I didn't do, which I regret, is I didn't check the Y axis. I'm gonna go back. Y is at 32.6. So I'm gonna go back down to 200. Make sure I'm at 32.6. And then after we go 22 frames by 500, I want them completely gone. And you should see Granny getting close to the bank. So bye bye bus. Is it 22? Uh 
that sucks. Okay. Let me go back to my camera. <laughs> and I guess it forgot the boys, but we okay. We get the boy and the dog in a second. But I think the scene is just about done. The last part will be all about the camera and what you want, um, what parts we're going to zoom in. So I would say let's have it slowly zoom into her until we get to about about 200 no about 250 that way we can still see the cars zipping by we'll just zoom in this particular scene you know be all about granny so let's see here Okay. That was great. Didn't see the boy and the dog after the scene, so there was no need to do any different modifications to them. Um, now, the only thing that's going to really make this scene come alive, of course, is the sound effects. But as far as a scene, you got a great scene right here. Play it one more time. And I'll probably just have her stop right here. Let's find this Helen again. Let's have her locked. And I want to put a break right there. So usually I will go ahead and do the scene that I want and then I'll do the, the sound effects and um, my video editor which I use um, Final Cut X or Pro or something like that but I do want this to have more of my scene so I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more and pray that when I get down here Mr. Eddie that his damn foot shows. So let me just go back to this and go in just a tad. Actually, since this bus comes right up, it is the perfect time to make Eddie and that dog go bye bye. So I will say, won't hide the bus, but let me go back out of camera mode. Let's make sure I got Eddie and go to zero. Same thing with the dog. Go 
go to zero, and go one frame before, and go to 100, because I want to make sure that they're, they're in the beginning. So that should do this thing. This should be everything that I want. Granny's going down. I could have horns honking, sound of outside noise going, sound of the bus going by, and Granny's walking to the bank. And I'll just stop it right there. And then from there, you could easily cut to inside um, of the bank, the scene inside the bank, Granny interacting, whatever. Okay, so while that's rendering, um, I'm going to go and try to find some nice sound effects for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to find some stuff that I want to go with it, like um, sound of a car engine, like that. That's a keeper. Um, let's go ahead and bring up Final Cut Pro. and start a new project. And I don't have any particular order for them right now, but I know I want the sounds, so I'm just gonna drop the sounds in. All right, so I'll minimize this for now. So I wanna kinda of get this video in front of everything first, just to see how it looks. So it'd be nice to have some dog sounds and sounds of kid, a kid, the kid running. So let's just see how this pans up with it. See if this lines up well. Sometimes it works out perfect. Okay, so the only thing I didn't like was that the I would have loved to really have the sound of the bus kind of starting when that bus shows up on the scene. So I'm going to try to break this a little bit. Probably about right here. So got the bus scene. I mean sound the sound effect for the bus. I think um, while we're waiting for traffic, it can still be some more noise. So let me let me see about this one. I like that. So I want this sound to kind of, I want this to be faint, but still hear it. Gives it more noise. I didn't even hear the cop noise. So let me let's see what happens when we crank the sound up much higher. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Okay. I don't think we need any more horns, so we're going to get rid of that. Get rid of that. We want this to break right where the seam ends, so we're going to get rid of that. And we want to get the sound of the boy running and probably the sound of the dog. And I want to get the seam right where he's coming in. Okay, so I see a part of the dog here. And I want it to slowly come in, so I'm going to bring the sound down. I'll let it be soft. Let's see how it sounds. Oh, I couldn't hear it at all. So have it fade down as well. And let's see if we can just find the sound of a dog. Okay, so let's try that one. Let's see. This part a good time to have him start panting. Definitely missing this part at the end, so just to drag the life out of it. Oh. Okay. Um, I could go online to to look at additional sounds but I think we have enough and I think this is a great scene so I will render this and you will get to see the final results of it hope you enjoyed the video on how to create a custom scene this is a great intro to any type of um, scene starting up and hopefully you can use these same practices and create your own custom scenes. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. This scene was created using Crazy Talk Animator 3. Characters used from Volusion was the Bulldog, Eddie and Walter. From Cartoon Solutions, Tyrone and Helen. And from Props and Scenes by Gary Pye, Harvey. Props and Scenes used for this video was Cartoon Solutions, The Bank. 
in Relusion Scenes and Prop, Metro City Life, Main Street Outdoor uh, Scene Series, and Modern Vehicles Volume 1. Background music from Incompetech. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you would like to purchase my product, head over to my store for characters, props, and scenes. If you enjoyed this video, here is a link to another video you might like from this channel. Thanks for joining and take care.